Hello and welcome back. I want to thank everybody for your patience with me. I've just had a lot going on and hopefully we're back on track. We've got some more reviews to finish out the year. Let's get into it. So as always, it's a pleasure to work with Isabel Kenyon and Fly on the Wall Press. Woo! This week I am reviewing Ruth Brandt's inaugural collection of short stories, No One Has Any Intention of Building a Wall. And I didn't know what to expect. So we kind of start off and truthfully I kind of forgot it was a collection of short stories. So when it switched after the first one and the first one was about this mother who's very concerned about her son and her son um he has accessibility needs and then the second story switches to a totally different character with totally different needs and total in a totally different life and then I was like oh right short stories and you know the thing that I really like about short stories is that it draws you in and Ruth Brandt is great at drawing you in because her stories are long enough that you feel satisfied and you feel like you get conclusion, but they're short enough that you're like, okay, this is good. <laughs> I'm not wanting any more. I'm not missing out on anything. Like this is a solid read. And the other thing that I like about short stories, just kind of more generally speaking, is that if you're like me and you go through periods where you're just like, I can't read, I need a break. It's a nice way to ease back into them. I think some of, just real briefly, some of why I was feeling so overwhelmed for a lot of October was just that I had a lot of heavy books, very interesting books, books I really, really enjoyed, but they just had so much depth that it was difficult for me to like take a breath essentially and so Ruth Brandt's collection was just a really nice way to get back into reading to kind of figure out where I was in the reading world and to move forward and I just I really enjoyed her style of writing she's so so descriptive and when she has dialogue it's really really expertly done and you know the kind of funny thing about it is that it reminded me a lot of the afterlife road in the sense that it's just everyday people it's everyday people going through everyday things like they're not it's not like the burn short story where it's two characters and you really really get invested and there's clearly so much more to the story where other stories and novels and novelas have a lot of depth, as I was saying, Brandt has a lot of breadth because she covers that funky mo- oh, there, sorry, I'm in a parking lot, so if the lighting is weird, I, I didn't have a lot of time to film this week, I'm sorry guys. But yeah, so she has stories like the very first one where it's a mom and a son and they have a, not really strained, but they, their relationship is complicated and then you have other stories like the titular one about the Berlin Wall and it's got a little bit of historical fiction because in it we meet Ida Streichmann who was a real person who was the first casualty of the Berlin Wall but then you have this other story about this man who was a foster child and as a foster child he thought that he harmed his foster sibling and when he finds out that well, before he finds out that his girlfriend's pregnant, when he meets his girlfriend, he says that he's Michael, who was his foster brother, because he's afraid that she won't like him for who he is. And it's complicated. And like, we all have that moment of meeting someone and we're like, are they going to like me for me? And we all have that moment when we have that life change or we have that milestone, that turning point where we're like, am I ready for this? And then we need that little voice to say, yes. Whether yes comes from within or yes comes from someone who we trust, sometimes you just need that. And then there's another historical fiction story with Alan Turing and 
I mean, I only really know about Alan Turing because I think spy and espionage and that sort of history is just so, so cool. But this one was a more personal look. This one, there's this teacher and he's very like, oh ha ha, I'm a teacher. I know things. And Alan Turing is rushing in and he says, I need to talk to Donald. I need to talk to Don. I, I have all these theories about Chris who died and what happened to his mind. And the professor's like bringing in theology and the Bible and God and telling Turing not to worry. And he's like, no, but Chris had such a magnificent mind. And then it, I instantly knew that it was Alan Turing, but I never knew that this Chris guy existed. And so that's something too that I love about historical fiction is that it can inspire someone to do their own investigation. It can inspire someone to look at history differently. And when you put it in a short story like Brandt does, it makes it that much more accessible because you don't get bogged down is such a, um, has such a negative connotation. But just again, going back to that theme of depth versus breadth, you don't get stuck in all of these layers of what's true and what's not and to what degree is it true and to what degree is it not and how does all of this marry together because you just get this glimpse. And so it reminded me of Afterlife Road in, point, in part because it's normal things happening to normal people and even though you could argue that Alan Turing or Ida Strykman aren't normal because there are these historical figures now at the time they were and it's not like they're even though they're famous now even though like people know about them and their names are in history books now it's not like you're seeing that superhuman side of them you're just seeing their humanity and their worry and their concern and their confusion and their processing and the other thing that reminded me of afterlife road is that it's kind of voyeuristic because like I don't know. I mean, I'm not into reality TV, but I think that's kind of voyeuristic in its own sense because you're like, ooh, what's gonna happen next? And kind of in a sense with these short stories, you have that same feeling because going back to the man who's self-conscious about his girlfriend, like you wanna know what's gonna happen when she finds out that, she's, that he's not really Michael. You wanna know, are they ever gonna be okay when she finds out that he's scared about being a father or there's this other story but it's this beautiful little like intellectual crush turned unrequited romance between these two individuals one is an artist and the other it's kind of I didn't quite get a sense of like what their title was but it's just these letters going back and forth and it's just beautiful because we do have intellectual crushes. We do have those people where you're like, oh my gosh, I wish I could think like you. I wish I could create what you create. And then it turns into that romance and y'all know me, sucker for that. But the thing that I think made that particular story really interesting was that it was an exchange of emails. And there's a similar short story where it's an exchange of letters. And I just thought it was really beautiful because not only does the whole collection showcase Brant's talent as an author in terms of description and dialogue and characterization, even for as brief as we see those characters. But this collection in particular really showcases how multifaceted her talent is because some are your traditional narrative short stories and some are exchanges with emails and some are exchanges with letters. And it's just also diverse that it really shows a lot of her skills in a lot of different ways and I truly think that this is one of those short story collections that has something for everyone and I think you're really going to enjoy it and I'm so grateful for Isabel Canyon with Fly on the Wall Press for reaching out to me and hope you all stick around next time and in the meantime happy reading and thanks.